boundaries change. When your life changes, when circumstances change, it's okay to change your boundaries and shift what you need at that time. And so healthy boundaries are when you understand what you need and you're willing to advocate for it. If you need more time in the morning, you know, you're waking up earlier. If you need your partner to not, you know, to to respect a certain need, then advocating with them, communicating what you need. But in addition to communicating with the need or setting the boundary, also making sure that it happens. I think I had a lot of boundaries in place, but I wasn't saying, hey, remember we talked about this. That's not okay. Or, hey, remember we talked about this. I don't have time for that. I was still like, oh, we did talk about it, but I guess they're here, so they need it. And so I'm just Uh, letting them kind of take again. And I just had a baby. So there was a lot of things that had shifted. And you know, I think there's a lot of people, whether you have a child or not, when you have an energy shift where you don't have as much to give, it takes a while for the people around you to catch up with the fact that this person who would normally just do what I asked isn't willing to do it or can't do Mm -hmm. it anymore. You're going to have to be the person that says, you know, I love you, but I can't. And I think that that is what's hardest for people to understand about healthy boundaries Yes, we want everyone around us to just love us and accept what we're changing. And yet that's not usually how it works. People are usually dragging, kicking and screaming like, no, I don't want you to change. I want you to keep doing what I want you to do. I think when energy shifts and your time shifts, like say you get a new job or you have a baby, I think it's just a learning experience for yourself and everyone around you too. Like what Mm -hmm. is the new normal? And I think that's something that people don't, they're not aware of like, oh, if there's a shift, my boundaries and my needs will change. So I have to be be aware of it. I think people just think everything will stay the same. Um, Another thing you mentioned was how, even though you communicated the boundary, people still, like somehow it still gets crossed. And, And ultimately it's, it's both parties, right? It's people asking, it's also you allowing it to happen. So, so talk about what happened there. And, and any advice for listeners who who do that really often? Like they try to set a boundary, but it doesn't work. This is the toughest part, I think, because um, when we start healing, I think this is where sometimes our relationships don't last or we end up losing certain people because we keep saying, hey, this is what I need from you or this is what's not okay. Like, for example, I think something that a lot of us have dealt with is a friend or family member who thinks it's funny to call out certain things or make certain jokes that are inappropriate or make certain comments that are inappropriate. And we've said, I know you think that's funny. I know you think it's not a big deal, but it actually really bothers me. Can you not do that? When we say that, that's the boundary, Mm -hmm. right? The, The other thing to keep in mind is that we're giving them an option. Boundaries are always an option. They're not ultimatums. They're not, you must do what I say if you want to be in my life. They're, I need you to hear that this is important to me. Will you respect what I'm asking you? And people have an option to say, yes, I will respect what you're asking. Or yes, I'll respect it, but I need a compromise because that doesn't actually work for me. Or no, I don't care about what you're saying and I'm going to do what I want to do. And when we get into that last category for sure, I think that's where we have to ask ourselves, what do I need to create in this relationship to feel safe? Can I stay in relationship with them? Do I only want to be around them when we're in groups? You know, for a lot of people, especially Mm -hmm. with certain family members, we're like, Mm -hmm. I'll see you when the whole family's around, but I'm not doing one-on-one with this family member because, you know, I have past experience that it hasn't worked out well, or I end up in stressful situations with them. So just becoming curious with yourself about in what ways am I overgiving in this relationship or am I confident or am I um, saying yes to connecting with them or being in spaces with them when I know that it's draining me? And I'm not saying that every single person around you is going to respect every single boundary you have and then you're going to live a perfect life and never have an issue again. Like that's not reality. But I'm also saying that the primary responsibility is on you to ensure that you are advocating for what you need. And that's the toughest part because we just wish people would just behave (laughs) and just not, you know, say or do things. And, you know, these are the more harmful boundaries. Sometimes the boundary is just, you know, it's not as harmful. Sometimes it's like, I'm not going to answer my phone after eight o'clock because I want to go to bed early because I want to wake up early and have a good, you know, I want to go for a run. Stop, stop answering your phone at, at night. 
you know, sometimes mm-hmm. it's on us to respect our yeah. own boundaries and realize yeah. I'm not the yeah. one doing what I said. Right. Yes. Yeah. I call that like keeping the promises you make to yourself because mm-hmm. that builds trust with yourself. That's another whole other topic. Cause if you don't, if you can't even respect your own boundaries that you set for yourself, how do you expect other people to start to respect your boundaries? <laughs> 